Hey guys, it's May May, and welcome to our first Wreathology recipe video. This recipe I'm sharing today is for our petite and our standard size loop and tail wreath. So if you purchase the supplies for that, that's what we'll be making. Now we have two recipes. These are our recipes. Don't worry, they're in the description for you to be able to reach them. Today we're making the petite, but I'm gonna tell you what you need to do to turn it into the standard. So if you want the slightly larger, I'll tell you how to do it. Now you need to prep your materials. Let's talk about materials real fast. So since I'm making the petite, I wanna talk about these. You're gonna need all of your materials here at the top, which again are listed in the description, and you're gonna make your cuts before you get started. So I've already made all of my cuts. They're all listed for you here. I thought I would take just a second to remind you how to dovetail a ribbon once you got them all cut. So once you have all your ribbons cut to the right size that they should be, you're gonna dovetail all of them. And here's my secret. I take my ribbon and fold it onto itself, even at one end, and then I fold the wired edges together. And the reason for that is because now I can make one slice and get all of my dovetailing done. So that now dovetails both ends with one cut. So it's half the cuts instead of having to do each end. And every ribbon that you have needs to be dovetailed. So this is your wreath form and each of these is called a twist. And we're gonna be putting our mesh inside our twist today. Now for the petite wreath, you'll use two colors in each twist. You'll use one of your mesh and another of your mesh. For the standard, you'll use one color and another mesh, okay? So this goes in your standard twist, two pieces of a solid color and then one accent color, but in the petite, you just do two, all right? So everything else is the same that I'm gonna show you today. That's the only difference. So let's work our petite. For the petite, we roll up our mesh pieces that we've already cut and prepped. Don't roll them super tight. You want them to be fairly large. The larger they are, the better the loops are at the end. This is what we'll put in our petite. So we're gonna squeeze this in the middle. We're gonna to go to one of our twists and we're just going to wrap this around one good time. We're gonna come back and put something in every one of these guys. So just leave it open just like that, okay? Now for the petite wreath, we decided to use three colors. All right, so I'll go back to my one color of black mesh, and now I'm gonna use my accent color of green, whereas before I used the red. So now I'm gonna take a green and roll it up, and a black and roll it. If I were making the standard size, I would do two of this and one of the accent, okay? But since we're making the petite today, we just do two in each twist. So I'm gonna put this one in here like this, wrap it once, Good time to hold it in place. I'm not even gonna worry about fluffing or anything yet. All that'll come toward the end. So let's just get these guys out of my way and let's do our next one. So our black, which is my main color, okay? And then my accent. And I'm alternating red and green all over this wreath. So I'm gonna run around and do exactly what I'm doing right here to every twist on the bottom of my wreath form. And I'll get back with you when I get to the top. So I'm sure I'm getting a little big for camera, but I'll spin it so you can see. Now we have one of those in every one of the bottom twists. And remember, we're coming back to these guys, so just leave them big so we can get to them. Just leave them standing. Now we're going to go into the center, and we're going to do exactly the same thing. So you're going to pick a color. So here's a red and a black. And remember, this is the petite. You just put two colors um, in the petite. If you're doing the standard size, you'll do three twists, which on ours, we use one accent color and two the same, but you could do three different colors too if you'd like. That's up to you. So again, we're coming back to this, so leave that there for us to get back in there next time. All right, so I've got red there. It means I want to do a black and green here. Put that there. I'm going to roll it up. Isn't this the most beautiful mesh? I love it. We have this available in our store. All the supplies I'm using today will be listed in the description below as well. All right, same thing on every twist. Alternate your colors and run around the top, twisting these guys in. So 
So here you go. This guy is all filled in, all of its twists. Let me go this way so you can see it. All of its twists are filled in. Now we're gonna go back to each twist and do our ribbon. And this is so easy and so rewarding. One thing I like to do with my twists is bring them out. So instead of bringing them to the center, I just kind of bring them out from the center because we're gonna be putting a really cool little piece in the middle. So we don't really need to fill the middle. Now this is where you see the name loop and tail start to make sense. Some of your ribbons are longer and some of your ribbons are shorter. These are your tails. These are your loops, all right? When doing the loops, you wanna take your one and a half inch ribbon and one piece of your two and a half inch ribbon. You're gonna create like an awareness ribbon. You know, you cross them over like this and that kind of looks like an awareness ribbon. You're gonna do that with the one pattern and also the other pattern. It is that easy, okay? Stack these guys on top of each other and then pinch them in the middle. That is now gonna go into one of your twists. So you just open up a twist, just like so, place this in and pinch it down with your twist. Now this, you're done at this point with your twist. So what I like to do is push them down and around to the back, unless you want them to show, which is super cute too, especially these kind of beige twists, the ones that we carry in the store. They look really cool. They look very um, kind of winter wonderland. All right, then you'll fluff your twist. Don't spend too much time here. You'll come back to this at the end as well. So we've done this one in this twist. Now we're gonna skip a twist. We're gonna skip one. So I'm gonna skip the green one and go to this red one. And I'm gonna take the same one and a half inch ribbon, but this time I'm gonna use my second two and a half inch. So that's why we tell you to get two different of your two and a half, but only one style of your one and a half. Same motion, awareness ribbon, awareness ribbon, stack on top, pinch, open and stuff. And don't worry about opening this. Once you have pinched that uh, mesh down into your twist the first time, pretty much stays there for you. So I'm gonna tuck my twist down and around. Then I can fluff. And again, I won't spend too much time on it here. I'll come back to it. All right, we're gonna skip one. So we're gonna skip this one and go to the next red one. Same thing, my one and a half inch. And this time I'm gonna go back to the ribbon I used the first time, which is my buffalo check. So I've got my buffalo check ribbon here. Get that to lay down. And then my one and a half inch here. Same thing, two awareness ribbons. Lay them on top of each other, pinch and stuff. Now you can do this as well. Notice how I keep putting my loops to this side. This time I'm gonna put them to the other side. So if you wanna mix that up, you can. Doesn't really matter. Your loops are gonna kinda just become loops no matter where they are. But if you like to mix it up, you can. We'll let those be there. I'll fluff again later. All right, we got one more on the top to do. So I'm gonna do that one here and we'll start the bottom. Okay, so the top is done. I'll spin it again. You can see that we have loops in every other twist on the top. Now we're gonna go to the bottom and I've got these loops right here that are um, separate from each other or they're one and then the other. I wanna go to the middle and I'm gonna start my bottom loops in between. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna take my one and a half inch and I think I'll go to my buffalo mesh. It doesn't matter. By the time you're done, there's no pattern created. It doesn't matter. It's just a lot of loops and tails and it's beautiful. All right, so lay these on top, twist them up. I think this time I'll put my loops in that direction. I'm gonna open my twist on the bottom, place this inside and twist. And again, I'll put my twist to the back at this point because I don't need them anymore. So just push that to the back and push the bottom one to the back as well. And you can spend a little time fluffing if you want, but we can come back to that. All right, so now we skip one and we go to the next one. This time I've got Santa Claus and my same plaid. Now feel free to mix up ribbons any old way you want. This is just the recipe we made because we want to make it easier for you guys that have never made a wreath before to give it a go. Something I like to do after I get these guys in here and I kind of fluff them a little bit, I push that middle down and that'll even make it pinch even further. All right, so I'm gonna go every other one and finish out my loops.
So all of my loops are now installed. I'll spin this around so you can see that. And now it's time for tails. So like I said, every twist gets ribbon. It's just what kind that it gets. So for tails, you take your shorter pieces and all you're gonna do is cross them over like an X and you're gonna, you're gonna pinch them in the middle and put them into open twists. So every twist that's left that you haven't put loops into, you add tails. Then you just wanna make sure your ribbons are facing up so you can see those pretty patterns. And go to the next one. Again, make an X, pinch them, put them into that twist, close it, and go ahead and tuck your twist at this point because we're not adding anything else. And let those fly out like that. All right, I'm gonna go all the way around. Every one that has um, nothing in it is gonna get tails. And I'm just gonna alternate my ribbon between the Santa and the Buffalo check and use my plaid one and a half inch as the top ribbon every time. So now I'll spin it again. All of my twists are put in, are all filled up with ribbon. I have my tails and my loops installed. Now I want to show you, do you see these little flyaway pieces right here? Just pull those out or snip them. You won't have many because once you get this locked into place, that kind of stops. But if you have a few of those you need to pull out or what have you, just go ahead and do it. All right, let's do our centerpiece and this wreath is done. Okay, so in the middle of the wreath, and remember, all of this wreath is the same, so you don't really have a top and a bottom. Here's what I'm going to put inside. Look at this adorable sign. This makes life so easy, and it looks so professional. I'm going to use some white chenille stems. I've got two holes, one in the top and one in the bottom. I'm just going to put that inside there, and to save yourself a little bit of frustration, come around here to the back and just twist this one good time just to kind of lock that in place so you know it's not gonna fall out on you. Let's do the same on the bottom. These signs are so cute. All right, and I'm just gonna twist that into place as well. Now I'm just gonna place my sign. And remember, there's no up or down on here. And you're just gonna take your two chenille stems and you'll find the pole, which you should be able to see no problem. And you just wanna put one chenille stem on one side of the little metal um, the wreath form itself, and then one on the other side. You'll flip this guy over, and I'm going to flip it so you guys can see it. And I've got this coming through one side and then around the other. I'm going to bring that in and just tighten it. Now, I'm tightening it about an inch and a half away from the sign itself, just so it'll hang there nice. And then on the bottom, I can do it here as well. Bring this where I know you can see it. Chenille stem around the wire. Bring it up pretty even. I'm gonna twist it. If I don't have it perfect, I can still adjust it, but that feels pretty good, actually. Yep, looks good. Now we pull and fluff. Put your sign in there, tuck it in, get it like you like it. Get your mesh, pull it to where you want it, and fluff all those loops. And there you go, voila. The petite loop and tail wreath. What makes it petite? It has one less piece of mesh in every twist than our standard size. Isn't it cute? I'll show you this on the door so you can see what it actually looks like. But I love how it turned out, and I hope you guys did as well. Now, if you'd like to pick up any of these supplies, you can order them online, or you can come in our store in Verbena, Alabama, and pick up all the supplies in person. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.